ಜನಗಣಮನ ಅಧಿನಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಪಂಜಾಬ್ ಸಿಂಧು ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಮರಾಠ ದ್ರಾವಿಡ ಉತ್ಕಳ ಬಂಗಾ ವಿಂಧ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ ಯಮುನಾ ಗಂಗಾ ಉಚ್ಚಲ ಜಲಧಿ ತರಂಗ ತವ ಶುಭ ನಾಮೆ ಜಾಗೆ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಗೆ ಗಾಹೆ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಥ ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ so welcome on behalf of uh, isa navi mumbai city branch and the department of anesthesiology and pain medicine at dy patil university school of medicine navi mumbai i dr siddharth verma secretary for isa navi mumbai city branch uh, welcome you and uh, uh, today we are going to uh, witness a very big event uh, and i request you to uh, be with us for the time uh, those of you who are listening on facebook live uh, you are also welcome and uh, i have put it put the link in the chat box for those of you if you drop out can't get in so guys please click on that link and uh, just join us on uh, facebook also so uh, i welcome honorable divekar ma'am uh, dr uh, bala venkat i am using their popular names and uh, they are very dear to us and that all of you also who are attending uh, we have the audience across the world we have got more than 800 registrations for the oration and this is across the world uh, so students of uh, uh, divekar ma'am and also dr bala venkat sir have joined in in numbers uh since our uh, celebrated speaker who will deliver this prestigious oration dr bala venkat he is from ganga hospital coimbatore tamil nadu we start this program with a prayer by the famous carnatic classical music singer ms subalakshmi from tamil nadu this was a prayer first ever to be performed live by an indian artist at a concert in the 1996 un journal assembly united nations journal assembly mitri bhajat akhil gajetri mitri bhajat akhil gajetri mitri bhajat akhil gajetri ಆತ್ಮವ ದೇವ ಪರಿ ಪಶ್ಯತ ಆತ್ಮವ ದೇವ ಪರಿ ಪಶ್ಯತ ಯುದ್ಧ ತ್ಯಜತ ಸ್ಪರ್ಧಾ ತ್ಯಜತ ಯುದ್ಧ ತ್ಯಜತ ಸ್ಪರ್ಧಾ ತ್ಯಜತ ತ್ಯಜತ now i will request dr anita roy president isa navi mumbai city branch to kindly come and welcome deveka ma'am Hello everybody. It's a pleasure to be hosting from ISA Navi Mumbai City Branch, the VM Divekar Anesthesia Society. The oration, the very first oration in the name of Dr. VM Divekar. She is one of the most celebrated and highly respected 
anesthesiologist that we have among, uh, among us today. And she's right here with us today. Can we uh, show her, please, on the screen? A super achiever, highly respected, yet a very modest person, Devekar ma'am has been an example to follow, the motivating factor, the guiding light behind many, an excellent clinician, and a very empathetic person who in the true sense of the word has touched the life of many, including her patients, as well as the people she worked with, worked with her seniors, as well as her juniors in the department of uh, Nair Hospital, Sain Hospital and D.Y. Patel Medical College. She is now Professor Emeritus at the D.Y. Patel School of Medicine, and she continues to be absolutely wondrous and awe-inspiring. During her active career, she was the founder president of the Sark Anesthesia Society. She was the president of National ISA. She has delivered various very prestigious orations which were awarded to her. No wonder that she received a Lifetime Achievement Award from ISA and from ACTA, which is the Association of Cardiothoracic, uh, Cardiothoracic Anesthesiologists. She was the first, uh, one of the first anesthetists in the cardiac team of anesthesiologists at KM Hospital. We are indeed proud to be associated with her because in 2004, when our society was conceived by Dr. Shantanu and then there was Dr. Surekha Patil, Dr. Sivashankar, uh, when they wanted to set up this Navi Mumbai branch of ISA, Devekar Madam had a lot of guidance to give us as to how to collect these few people and make a society of our very own, a branch of our very own. So we named this society as the VM Devekar Anesthesia Society. We've come a, far, uh, come a long way since then. We have registered our society under the Society Registration Act. We've always received a lot of motivation and support from her. We have also received support from D.Y. Patel Medical College. So I would like to thank uh, the president of D.Y. Patel, the, uh, Mr. Vijay Patel, our dean, uh, Dr. Shashin Dharan, the director, Manisha Ghodke, and the um, Manisha Bobde now. She was my classmate. So she was Manisha Ghodke at that time and uh, Vice Chancellor, Mr. Shirish Patil, Dr. Shirish Patil. Uh, I would request uh, Shashin Dharan sir, as well as Manisha Godke, as well as uh, uh, Surekha Patil ma'am. We will all felicitate uh, Dr. Divekar with a shawl. Uh, Varsha, can you please get the shawl here? And uh, we will stand behind ma'am's chair, so as to maintain that social distancing and we will felicitate ma'am. And then we will have a little lamp lighting in the true tradition of India in order to introduce and start this uh, prestigious oration. So the visuals are from, I, I hope you all can see the visuals. I will just. Uh, So now proceeding for the lamp lighting.
Dr. Devekar, ma'am will now say a few words please, about her thoughts on this oration today. Ma'am, please. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Balvenkat Subramaniam, our Dean, Dr. Sachidharan, my dear friends, colleagues, and students. Uh, I'm so happy to here to be uh, today. And uh, also, uh, it's been a great uh, occasion also that Dr. Bala is going to uh, speak to us. Yeah. And um, I wish uh, this uh, uh, meeting all the success. And okay. um, actually, the ISA Navi Mumbai, uh, I was with them for, from the conception and execution of the <laughs> society. Uh, so it's also almost like a baby to all of us. And I'm very happy to be here today. And uh, actually, uh, <laughs> uh, I feel the, uh, uh, it has been, this oration has been made into a, a great event for me. And um, I thank all of you who are involved in this and all the best uh, for this function. So I will have the proud privilege to introduce uh, uh, Dr. J. Bala Venkat, as his students popularly call him. And uh, he is uh, MDDA, Senior Consultant and Academic Director, Department of Anesthesia and Perioperative Care, Ganga Hospital and Medical Center, Coimbatore in India. So he's the president, he's been the president of uh, Asian Oceanic Society of Regional Anesthesia, that is the uh, from 2019 to 2022. He's held a lot of important positions. He's been the founder, president and current chairman of the Academy of Regional Anesthesia of India. He is uh, the National Governing Council member of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists and he is the member Educational Committee of World Federation of Society of Anesthesiologists 2020-24. Uh, he has been the member Scientific Core Committee of World Congress of Anesthesia 2021. Of course, he has been the editor for uh, quite popular and internationally acclaimed journals. So he is, uh, to his credit, uh, more than 542 lectures. Uh, nationally and 47 lectures internationally his and his workshops are very popular amongst the students and uh, he's, he's delivered uh, a number of orations to his credit he's got the awards one of the most popular one which was in 2017 was presented to him by the honorable health minister of tamil nadu in a function organized by i tamil nadu straight academic excellence award he has been uh, an academician throughout his career starting from his uh, uh, postgraduate uh, medical days. Now we proceed with the oration ceremony and the rest of the proceedings to be conducted now from the studio in Coimbatore. So we have there with us one of our representative, Dr. Monica, who is there and uh, she will uh, uh, she will now uh, conduct the ceremony on our behalf there. So I think you can see already on the screen. Pranams to everyone. I seek the blessings of Almighty to shower the divine grace and blessings on each one of us and our families to show us the right path to grow and make this world a better place to live. We are pride, the pride of our country is that we may follow different faiths, but we align together to make the country proud and to contribute to the global well-being. Said Charles Darwin, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, not the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And this is what we have seen in the last two years when we have been challenged by the pandemic. 
but the human brilliance will prevail and we know that we can solve the extraordinary challenge by doing ordinary things with extraordinary discipline i'm sure there will be a day when we'll come back very soon together and celebrate all of our successes together this oration was supposed to be in the dy patel medical college auditorium to celebrate one of the legends of anesthesia in this globe dr vasumathi diveka had that been the case we wouldn't have this glitches but i'm sure notwithstanding the audio visual glitches we continue to make sure that this event that's a tribute to madam would be remembered forever i take this opportunity to thank the president of the navi mumbai indian society of anesthetists dr anita rai secretary dr siddharth the members of the governing council dr varsha vyas senior members of dy patel medical college dr sureka patel dr gedu and uh, the anesthesiologist who helped at this meeting dr meghna thank you very much and dr monica it's indeed a great privilege and honor to deliver the first dr vasumathi divekar oration on behalf of the navi mumbai society of indian society of anesthesiologists how do you describe such a dawn and such a legend i would like to enumerate what she stands for in the first few of my slides she had such strong core values she felt success is all about being in the process of joyfully creating a life that reflects your highest values your deepest beliefs and your greatest dreams she felt excellence is never an accident she said masters make everything look so simple the most brilliant of the best do their craft with effortless ease and exceptional grace or at least make it look the way to you and me this is one of the very famous quotes of mahatriya ra success should never feed your ego but must always feed your sense of responsibility success is not a status it is a responsibility with every rung you scale on the ladder of success you are also scaling rungs on the ladder of responsibility aspiring to be successful in essence is aspiring to be more responsible and that's exactly what madam stood for madam always felt that you may be born in a middle class family but you can scale great heights in this lifetime that can cause an industrial revolution you may be born to a illiterate parent but you can die as a scholar of world repute you may have been considered a misfit during your childhood days but you can become a role model for the future generation what we are and what we have been has no bearing on what we can be we can be what we choose to be this are the firm beliefs of vasumathi divekar madam and uh, she also said if you need to balance everything time is important and this quote is very very important my future comes from where my time goes so where should my time go for everything that you want to do you need to have the time in essence we reach a point in life when time almost becomes our god so madam believed in all this and i understood that every single student who was under her she used to call maje mule my child in marathi and uh, what a paradox every student whom she taught also said not just a teacher but a mother what a brilliant connect between a guru and the shishya i think uh, the parampara of india of guru shishya was clearly established by madam with every student of hers 
Dr. Rashmi Dalvi, the daughter, the gifted daughter of the Vika Madam, I had the opportunity to learn a lot about Madam from Dr. Rashmi Dalvi, who serves as the head of the Department of Pediatrics, Hematology and Hemato-Oncology in the Bombay Hospitals, Mumbai. So she said, I wanted her to describe her mother in a single sentence. And she said, she is just not a mother, but my friend. The daughter says that she is my friend and every student says that she is my mother. What a tribute that you can give to such a noble person on earth. I have learned a lot about Madam. Madam was born in Bangalore. The childhood days was in Bangalore and her father was a nationalist. And Madam took it up and she was, she was having na nation in her mind all the time. And many times she went by her father in wearing only the Khadi clothes. In spite of having an extremely rich silk business in Bangalore, Madam decided to pursue the medical education. She got educated in Mysore Medical College where she uh, did her uh, the undergraduation. And uh, after completing medical school, during the time I also wanted to bring in, Madam was a very avid sportswoman. She was the one who played cricket and hockey. And this was take, taken in a cricket ground, ground 68 years ago. So from there, I think she got the physical stamina and the mental grit of a true, true sports person. And she has also remained sportive all throughout her life. Her daughter says that she's a person who is very, very calm, quiet, known for her equanimity in tough situations. And she's also known for being very, very diplomatic in all the people whom she speaks to. And she's never judgmental or her strong attributes. And uh, Divake Madam, as an youngest anesthesiologist, giving a floral welcome to the President of India, Dr. Radha Krishnan, during the Silver Jubilee Conference of the Association of the Surgeons. This was the last conference where the conference was for surgeons and anesthesiologists together. You can see the young Divake Madam presenting the bouquet to the President of India. What a picture it can. This reflects the ability of Madam to truly lead from the front, right from her young age. Apart from sports, she was also brilliant in her academic career. She always stood first in all the academic qualifications that she has made. After her undergraduation, she went on to do DA. That was the only degree that was available. Um, the DA was even not even available in India. So at behest of her husband, Sir said, Sir is also a, a person of great repute. He was a great physician and he went to Sweden those days to learn about renal replacement therapy. And he requested Divekar Madam to go to UK and get the DA degree. So Dr. Divekar Madam went to London to, D, to do her DA and returned back as one of the first qualified anesthesiologists of India. And later, when MD was brought into India, she also completed her post-graduation in anesthesia. And then subsequently, she has worked in all the corporate hospitals of Mumbai with a long tenure in the celebrated Department of Anesthesia, Nair Hospital. And uh, she retired as the Dean of Nair Hospital. And post-retirement, she again was very, very active. And even now, even today, at the ninth decade, after completing nine decades, she continues to be active. And she's currently the chairman of the ethical committee of D.Y. Patel Medical College, Navi Mumbai. So she, she, because of her versatile personality, had many things to accomplish. She was the national president of the Indian Society of Anesthesiologists in 1986. She was a founder president of the Sark Anesthesia Society. She was the patron of the West Zone ISA. She delivered the presidential oration in 1988. She delivered the Venkatra oration in 1993. And she is, was given the Lifetime Achievement Award 
by ACTA, the Cardiothoracic Society, and Lifetime Achievement Award by the ISA, the national body in Indore in 2012. So this is Madam taking over as the president in the WISAC conference in 1986. This is when she took over as the founder president of Sark Society of Anesthesia. She was extremely close to the Nair Hospital Department. And this picture depicts the day that she retired from being the head of the department of, uh, and the dean of the uh, Nair Medical College. And she loves it students and she's always among them. So this is a picture that was taken to show how she loves the children. This is the 1976 batch of anesthetists with Divekar Madam in 2020. And uh, this is the centenary year celebration of the TN Medical College. Uh, this was taken, this picture was taken in 2021, clearly depicts that she's full of life. And she always would love to be with people much younger in her age so that the vibrations from them are transmitted to her. And this is with Dr. Urmila Sate, whom she, along with, she travels to most of the conferences. So she was an excellent teacher, a great academician, a great researcher. Those were the days when research was not seen, was not being done much, but she did a lot of research work in hypothermia in neurosurgery, pseudocholinistries deficiency and scolin. Uh, and uh, she was the one According to her student, Dr. Vandana Legri, she was the one who was very fond of all the latest and modern technology, and she will get them into the Department of Anesthesia Nair Hospital. The now workstations, the gas chromatography, the pulmonary function test equipment, the blood gas analyzer, and anesthesia technicians. And she was out there to get in all the things that are coming in new into the Department of Anesthesia. One of the close confidants of Dr. Diveka Madam, Dr. Indula Panchal said, she is a pioneer in starting the OPD services and recovery room facilities anesthesia in corporate hospitals in Mumbai. And she was responsible for starting the first multidisciplinary pain clinic in Nair Hospital. Said Dr. Lalita Nayak, she has been the first to establish the post-anesthesia recovery room, the anesthesia OPD, and she was the one who introduced new drugs into clinical practice in Mumbai, including drugs like althacin, propanidate, etomidate, etc. So she, um, Vandana Legri Madam says that a guru, she was a great guru and a great source of inspiration, a mother figure to many of us and an able administrator are a very few phrases which describes Madam perfectly. And Dr. Urmila Sate, whom she travels a lot, she says, she's the true idol for me. Dr. Madhusudan Vichare says, Dr. Divekar is an exemplary teacher and an exceptional teacher. She has helped me to solve my problems both, either it is medical or personal. And Dr. Nandini Deve, who has been not her student, but been rubbed by her inspiration, she says that she was an uh, inspiration for several generations of anesthesiologists. Dr. Nanda Mehta, her student who lives in Nasik, says that she was moved by her humility. When she met her one, in one of the meeting, Madam asked Dr. Nanda, what is your daughter doing? She said, Dr. Nanda said, she's in the dermatology department of Rajavadi Hospital. So she said, can you ask your daughter to come and meet me? But when it didn't happen, when the daughter found it was hesitant to go and meet her, she walked to the department of dermatology to meet Dr. Nanda's daughter clearly shows the humility with which she has been doing it, her life. Dr. Meenakshi Tripathi, currently in UK, said that she met her in Cardiff initially, and she said, this is a person who inspires hundreds and hundreds of people around her. So these are Dr. Bina Kamdar on the left extreme said, she's both like a mother teaching us every step of the way. She's also a friend who you can lean on a teacher who has taught several generations. So this is a true picture of what Madam is professionally. This is the family picture. You see uh, Madam's family on the right-hand side. She has got one son and daughter and husband was a famous physician. And uh, the son is uh, into virtual platform based in USA now. And uh, true to her belief that if you are with younger people, you remain young. The two granddaughters are her 
soulmates. So that's the Baker Madam's family. So I feel it's a great privilege to deliver this lecture on this oration on the topic to know and to be known. Madam is a true role model, is a living example of what this topic stands for. Life is extremely precious. It's a true gift to each one of us. And it becomes important that we need to know what we need to do. And this gives an opportunity to make sure that you are known. So what do you do to convert this life into an extremely precious life? In the next few minutes, we will go through what we would want it to accomplish in our life. I bring to you greetings from Ganga Medical Center and Hospital, where I've been working for the past 26 years. This journey has taught me how to evolve and how to imbibe the good qualities. We need to know that every person whom you meet, the every conversation that you make, every situation that you face is a learning process. You need to keep your eyes and ears open to imbibe all these phenomena so that when you grow, you utilize them most appropriately. I take this opportunity to thank the chairman of our hospital, Dr. J.G. Shanmuganathan, the same age of Dr. Vasumati Diveka, an anesthesiologist who completed a DA from London, a person whom we want to emulate. He completed his PhD when he was 84 years. He inspires us by his hard work and dedication. Our managing director, Dr. Kanagavalli Muganadan, I learned from her how to be patriotic and how to contribute our might to the development of the country. She says you can go across the globe to learn, but come back to India and serve the country. And she did tell me this when I was very young, and I'm extremely happy that I followed her footsteps. So all this I'm mentioning because you need to know that you will learn from each one of the seniors. Dr. Raja Sabapati, the chairman of the Department of Plastic Surgery, he says that patient first, and he says that you have to power to prevent a death. And Dr. Rajshekar, the chairman of Department of Orthopedics, has shown us the path of combining clinical work with research. It can go hand in hand and you can enter into the international arena showing the power of the nation. So we learn from every senior and everyone. And I would wanted each one of you to make sure that you imbibe these qualities from every person whom you meet. I learn a lot from my fellow colleagues and doctors in the Department of Orthopedics, Plastic Surgery, and Anesthesia. And I thank the, every anesthesiologist in Department of Anesthesia for contributing to teaching, education, and clinical research. I'm happy to say that when I joined my institution, we were three anesthesiologists, and now we are close to 80 anesthesiologists. So I thank the entire consultants of the Department of Anesthesia for making this happen. What we are today, we need to know that it's because of contributions that we re received from our teachers. I did my uh, undergraduate at Coimbatore Medical College, my DA from BJ Medical College, Pune, from my MD from PGA Chandigarh. I take this opportunity to thank every teacher who was a mentor. What we are today, we need to know that it's because of their contribution to us. I thank my parents and my parents-in-law who showed us the path to choose and the wisdom to confront situations. And each one of us have to thank our parents for giving us the opportunity to be what we are today. This is a lesson that we need to learn. And I need to thank my family, which or the shock absorbers and who are the ones who allow us to grow. This was a picture that I wanted to share with all of you. This was taken in the wedding of my first daughter recently and we welcomed my son-in-law into the family. So we learned from all the youngsters, many things. The new gadgets that are coming in, the learning experience is from the younger people. And our work is a prayer. Everything that we experience from the food to the clothes to shelter, that comforts and the luxuries we enjoy are all the rewards from the work we do. So we 
we revere our work place and our work is a prayer who are anesthesiologist anesthesiologist are truly the special children of god why is it so it's truly a sacred branch across the globe the critically ill patient the trauma victim who is in the verge of death or a critically bleeding patient any situation where you are confronted with dealing a patient who is battling between life and death the person who comes and intervenes and makes sure they live that's the anesthesiologist majority of the time across the globe so we all need to know that we are one of the most sacred branches god created pain and he created anesthesiologist to make sure that we re we relieve the pain so we are truly the angels created by god and we need to know that it's a big responsibility that we take it up and make sure that every patient who comes to us has got a pain free perioperative period now we need to know that if we need to grow if we need to progress if our anesthesiology specialization has to become equal and popular to other specialties it becomes important that we take more responsibilities and we should diversify this is what was said by one of the most uh, accomplished anesthesiologist a, an anesthesiologist who is known to every student in this world because of his book the miller book of anesthesia when he the american society of anesthesiologist task force to identify possible anesthesia paradigm in 2025 called miller miller emphasized that anesthesiologists need to diversify their practice paradigms in order to ensure a future leadership position in medicine and for doing that he he said that we need to become perioperative physician i am happy to share that since 2002 the last two decades our hospital which is a 650 bed tertiary care referral center anesthesiologist work as perioperative physicians in you doing the e fast in doing cannulations in taking the rounds both in the ward in the post operative period in the icu so anesthesiologist have to take up the responsibility of perioperative physician and the reason being that if one person leads the perioperative care if one person owns the respons responsibility you will all agree and accept the outcome is going to be excellent and i wanted to enumerate i was introspecting what is that we do why is that we need to do the job of a perioperative physician or we qualify to do that and you will be and even i was astonished when i start writing the points we look after patients right from the premature up to a centenarian patients with several comorbidities including like diabetic ketoacidosis profound hypotension coronary artery disease patients on polypharmacy taking multiple drugs because then you need to know everything about drug interaction looking after the critically ill patients both monitoring and closely following up their internal milieu in trauma resuscitation and also now you know the in stage organ disorders all can be treated by organ transplantation and we take the lead we are experts in invasive monitoring to assess the internal milieu very good in transesophageal echocardiography e fast not to learn thromboelastography the bispectral index flow volume loops abg near infrared spectroscopy moving into various facets of point of care ultrasound we are also the ones across the globe using lot of intravenous fluid therapy total parental nutrition blood component therapy into post operative parameters of the patients looking after their chest their dvt prophylaxis pain management acute pain chronic pain antibiotic regimen if you look at this it becomes very clear that this specialization is very unique very versatile and i think it's time that each one of us listening to this oration should take and take on them the responsibility of becoming a perioperative physician and the future generation should be given the ideal path 
to take as an anesthesiologist that they look after the patient completely and i think this is the big step forward for us that we will be recognized as one among all these specializations and this long drawn uh, self pity that i am only an anesthesiologist i am not been given enough importance will vanish i think it is our duty that in our lifetime that we need to accomplish this it's very important to understand that we are moving towards quality and uh, this is an excellent article which says quality has been defined by six domains it has to be effective equitable timely efficient safe and patient centered and uh, to do that we need to have strong work ethics we are the person who have got the power to prevent a death and we are the ones who are dealing with critically ill patient so it becomes essential that our, we are like the pilot where we have to take split second decisions to make sure that our patient survives the difference between life and death and to do that we need to be highly disciplined and we need to follow certain ethics one of the most important thing is if you are confronted with doing a major anesthetic procedure the next day it becomes important that you are well rested the previous night and you come to the operating room at least 15 minutes before that you are supposed to come and you take a you 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 give your complete 100% to the patient this strong work, work ethics has to be established to make sure that we work as an excellent perioperative physician we know that we need to as a perioperative physician we have we know that we need to do a pre anesthetic assessment and optimization we need to decide on the pre medication and pre emptive analgesia we need to look, look after the intra operative protocols incorporating all the modern uh, f- factors that makes the surgical outcome better and we look after the post operative period of a patient if we need to accomplish this if you get a patient today you need to begin with the end in mind and the end in mind is patient getting discharged walking back home with a smile and how do you do it this is something very important all things are created twice this is something which i think it's going to be the game changer if every patient has to walk out we need to have a strategic plan and what is this strategic plan what do you mean by saying all things are created twice if i am going to anesthetize a patient tomorrow and based upon the inputs that i got from the patients by seeing the patient symptoms signs understanding what the patient has to undergo the surgery the first creation i am creating is a blueprint and what i am going to do and uh, the day prior to give anesthetizing the patient and so i have a clear plan mentally which is run inside me and when i really go to the operating room i work with the brick and mortar i make sure that the patient walks home so it shows that there are two creations one is the mental creation and second one is the actual creation if you ask the peak performers the vishwanathan anand if he has to uh, play in the world championship he has played it opponent his opponent mentally several times before he actually played him on the event when the, the the championship happened and he won he won because he did the rehearsal the previous day so this is exactly what will happen with peak performers they live it they feel it and they experience it and we need to give this to every single patient who comes to uh, us for us to anesthetize them so when you see them in the preoperative period who are what are the factors that a patient likes about a physician every patient likes an anesthesiologist who listens to them carefully in the preoperative period very important do you know that this is the most important thing the patient wants they want the doctor to listen to them i think this is truly important to know and once you have carefully listened then every symptom that the patient said has to be accounted and it's very important that this has to be at the cerebral level of planning and immediately you start constructing your plan for the perioperative period and after getting the symptoms a calm quiet confident person will make sure after assuring privacy you do an immaculate physical examination of the patient 
and some of the important things that you should keep it as a point is a simple oxygen saturation gives a lot of information of the cardio respiratory status of the patient it's important to know where you start your vein these are small factors but this is what makes the difference between safe anesthetist and mediocre anesthesiologist so we need to know where we are starting the line which hand we are start starting the line will this will this hand go under the drapes should i put an extension tubing all this planning is done in the pre operative visit itself and many times you are confronted with the situation that if you have not examined the spine it is it is a nightmare you go and see a very degenerative spine and you are not able to give the spinal anesthesia so we need to know and i wanted to emphasize that there these are aspects that we make sure that we see in the pre operative period we are moving into an era of prehabilitation we knew rehabilitation very well but now we are moving into what is called as prehabilitation prehabilitation is when you see the patient in the pre anesthetic clinic thanks to the waker madam when even four decades before she thought that we should have an opd for anesthesia what a thinking madam i think we need to salute you for what you thought decades ago when the whole world is realizing that we need to have opds and prehabilitation units the prehabilitation units are divided into three now one is the psychological well being so the goals of this is to make sure that the patient does not have any kind of psychological stress for, while undergoing surgery second thing is nutritional optimization it has been found that the enhanced recovery program can happen if the patient has been nutritionally optimized prior to a major surgery and the third one is exercise and physical activity all those patients for example undergoing a total knee replacement if they are subjected to quadriceps exercise much before they undergo the surgery they found that the outcomes are very good they start mobilizing very early so prehabilitation we should know that has to be a part of each of us who's a part of today's oration and it's very important that informed consent should be one which each one of us have to focus on for any procedure treatment or medication patient should be informed about the procedure and this is something i would really want to emphasize to be a part of every one of us strict protocols have to be uh, followed both in private practice and in institutional practice and in private practice the responsibility becomes more because you are alone and it's important that you give the same quality of perioperative care like in an institution by having your individual protocol based upon the infrastructure of the hospital that you have gone in of late in spite of the phenomenal progress that we have made both in the field of clinical acumen technology in spite of that do you know that several perioperative mishaps happen and to prevent this dr atul gawande from us said in spite of the tremendous progress that we have made if we need to be safe if we need to be reliable we need to go to the checklist and the who checklist uh, should be a part of all our institutional protocol including private work believe me the minute we started doing this the chances of having mishaps which are preventable ones or very very less so um this is a beautiful statement atul gawande says here then is our situation at the start of the 21st century we have accumulated stupendous know how we have put it in the hands of some of the most highly trained highly skilled and hard working people in our society and with it they have indeed accomplished extraordinary things but that know how is often unmanageable avoidable failures are common and persistent and not to mention sometimes very demoralizing and frustrating and if we need to come out of this we need to have a checklist and this is another superb book which gives a lot of thought for us on the power of habit and uh, why we do what we why we do what we do and how to change is a beautiful book a strong recommendation 
for everyone who wanted to change their habits for preventing the mental flaws from happening inside it becomes pertinent then do we follow the guidelines guidelines have been established for several peri operative uh, protocols across the globe some from india some from outside india most of it we get from american society of anesthesia but an appeal to all the indian anesthesiologists who are part of this oration today to make sure that they learn the guideline very well they go through the guideline very well but several attributes of the guideline might not be suitable to the circumstances in which we practice hence guidelines have to be known but do we follow in toto or do we adopt the guidelines to the infrastructure that you live in and make sure that you make the necessary changes and when you make the necessary changes it becomes important you take into confidence the surgical colleague the patient attendant and if need be an informed consent and then go ahead and do the procedure this is something which i found very useful in geriatric patients coming with hip fractures who are on antiplatelets and who will have great outcomes if we do it under neuraxial the guideline would say that when the antiplatelets are taken we need to wait for 7 days before you do a neuraxial imagine a patient with a hip fracture not able to move for a week and he may not die of having an epidural hematoma but he may have severe morbidity for having lied in the bed who was lying in the bed for more than a week and secondary complication so follow the guidelines but make necessary changes do you know that there is one person who who's dying every day in the united states in the most advanced nation because of hospital acquired infection 15% of surgical population across this globe have a possibility of having significant morbidity and mortality because of because of hospital acquired infection so this is something which we should know 15% of our surgical patients have one or the other form hospital acquired infection and it becomes important that as anesthesiologists we just do not focus on what we do as an anesthetist like giving spinal or epidural we need to step up further and we make sure that we become a part of the hospital infection control committee and we ourselves follow diligently the hand wash before and after touching the patient antimicrobial prophylaxis should become a part of the anesthetist before we start the procedure and we may make sure that the parenteral antibiotic is given at least within the first 120 20 minutes before the incision is made this is something which we have been following in our institution and there is a very clear indication do you know that if a patient instead of taking a bath with the soap if he takes an antiseptic antiseptic shower the chances of developing a surgical site infection is less so i would like to urge that if you have not followed it so far it's a it's a great uh, ingredient to your perioperative care the patient takes one bath the day prior to the surgery and one on the day of the surgery to decrease the bio burden as anesthesiologist we are the ones who enter the neuraxis and i am very very confident that each one of us are following the strict protocol of making sure that we become very sterile with at least a minimum of 3 minutes of scrub with betadine solution or chlorhexidine solution and wear sterile clothes before we touch the patient because if they develop meningitis patient would have come for an asa grade 1 surgical procedure but we should not give him meningitis and make him to go to the critical care unit so this is something which i really wanted to emphasize we need to know that 15% of the surgical population gets a hospital like infection and we need to know that we need to take preventive steps with with lot of uh, focus from today onwards the next common reason why a person has significant morbidity and mortality inside a hospital is the perioperative medication errors so this is another area of great focus that every anesthesiologist should work on they should take up the responsibility of writing the post operative orders and also to make sure that the new drugs that are written do not have any kind of 
uh, sign a idiosyncrasy with the previous drug the patient has been taking. And it also becomes important that we need to have strict protocols on zero hour medication to be administered by us to make sure the perioperative period is excellent, like decreasing the blood loss by using antifibrinolytic, tranexamic acid, decreasing the pain post-op by giving paracetamol intravenous, decreasing the inflammation post-op and nausea in the post-operative period by giving dexamethasone, antibiotics, anti-emetics to decrease the post-operative nausea and vomiting. And this is an era where you decrease the use of opioids. So use opioids with a uh, lot of um, um, uh, restricted use of uh, opioids is becoming something extremely popular now. Opioid sparing anesthesia has taken uh, precedence in several of the journals today. And we need to carefully plan the choice of anesthesia, which will take into account the needs of the surgeon and that of the patient. Just because we know how to give a regional block, it, it is not mandatory that you need to keep the patient, patient awake if he doesn't want to. So regional can be incorporated, but if the patient would want it to sleep, I think it's our duty to give them. So the choice of the patient, choice of the surgeon, should be taken into account when you choose the type of anesthesia that you wanted to give. Small things, big outcomes. So we need to work on small things like intraoperative tunicate time and the cement application, the aftermath of the cement application. I'm just giving some examples and insights because we are an orthopedic unit, we see this. And same thing will happen in several other subspecialization. When you do anesthetic, you will know what are the most important steps in the surgically, which will result or result in possible complications. And we need to focus on all this. And if we do that, the outcome is going to be excellent. And uh, hypothermia is very common. We need to take it on us that we make sure that the institutions that they work in make sure that the temperature is maintained by a bar hugger, intraoperative fluid, um, the, the devices that are available to warm the fluids intraoperatively. In the post-operative period, believe me, in spite of the phenomenal progress that we have made in terms of uh, the workstations, in terms of equipments, in, ter in terms of the pharmacology drugs that are available, even today, the EPOC study, which was done three years ago in 12 EPEX institutions of this country, showed that the acute pain service was not established in many of the centers. And even if they were established, even in the most established center, the study indicated the in the first 24 hours, still 48% of the patients had a VAS score of more, more than three. So it clearly indicates that we need to embark on the path, create a clear acute pain service and also a clear protocol in our hospitals where we work in and make sure that every single patient whom we anesthetize has got a VAS score of less than three in the first 24 hours. This is a dire requirement. We are moving into an era of 2021 and how can we allow our patient to cry in the post-operative period? And I would wanted to say the thanks to the advent of ultrasound, regional analgesia has become an important component of multimodal analgesia and it becomes important that irrespective of the age each one of us should take up on us to go and learn the ultrasound guided regional blocks and incorporate it to every single patient whom we anesthetize now every single nerve in the body can be blocked with an ultrasound and this in spite of giving a ga if you also give a nerve block to that particular area, site-specific analgesia, the post-operative pain is extremely good and the patient will be ever thankful for you for what you have done to them. This is just a perineural femoral catheter which is kept for a patient who underwent a hip procedure. In India, where you don't have electric and electronic driven uh, pumps, it's also good to use um, multifuses and elastomeric infusion pumps like this, which are cheap and which does not need a power and it doesn't depend upon a nurse to come and give. These are all excellent equipments which need, we need to use. It also becomes important that we need to know that we are dealing with more geriatric population now. And the number of people living above the age of 60 is very high and many of them land up in the operating room. And one of the most important things that happens to them is there is a change in the cognition. 
there is a problem with their brain health after they undergo surgery and anesthesia. I think the next focus has to be on brain health for our patients. And I would like all of you to get into this website on the brain health initiative perioperative uh, in the perioperative period, which is done by the American Society of Anesthesiologists. We always have to say yes to the new innovation for accentuating our patient safety. So if we are very sure that we gave an excellent perioperative care to our patient, how do we move to the next level? How do we make what we do know to the world? It's how is that all that I spoke so far is to know and next is to be known. And if you have to be known, then you need to go to the extra mile that you have to become extremely knowledgeable and you need to be extremely hardworking and you need to keep on acquiring the new skill and skill and knowledge when it comes together, excellent clinical outcome and you're respected. The surgeon respects you, the patient respects you and your colleagues respect you. And slowly what happens is you start practicing absolutely evidence-based. You adopt best practices and you are the NIDAS for new clinical research. And because of this regular reading and updating and reading journals, visiting centers of excellence, going to international meetings, you start you're slowly becoming holistic in what you're doing. And when you become holistic in what you do, you start accumulating so much data and uh, all this data that you have accumulated, you need to pass on to your juniors and you need to become a true role model. This is again, I would like to want to quote the Waker Madam, who was an apostle of knowledge, skill, and she made sure that every person who is passing through her, she gave all that she knew, and this is what we need to do to all of our juniors. And uh, with this, we need to build a strong team. A leader knows interdependence is a higher value than independence. So each one of us will start building an excellent team for ourselves to make sure that you are known. What one person can do if it's multiplied by 10, 20, and 30, and they do similarly a good work, your work is being acknowledged first in your city, then in your state, then in your country, and you will start attracting patients from outside the country. This would be the biggest tribute that you can do to your nation by making known your work, your experience, your expertise, and make sure that people from faraway regions come and get the solace they want, want, uh, wanted from, from us. And it's very important in your journey that you need to focus on certain personal traits. And one of the most important traits that I would like to emphasize is humility. Like again, I would want to quote Vasumati Divekar, Madam, because I interacted with several of her colleagues and the most important thing they said was humility and humility. And they also kept telling about her enterprise and her ability not to give up. So all these things, personal traits, which was part of Madam, should become part of each one of us. Each word here is important to make sure that the knowledge, the wisdom, and the clinical expertise, if it has to be converted into the world knowing it, if we need to move to the next level, it becomes very important that you have to have tremendous integrity in what you do, a great vision and persistence in what you do. This will enormously contribute for you becoming better than what you are today. And I found out in the literature and also in real life, one word that will make a difference between a mediocre and a successful person is the person who has got the integrity to what he stands for. So if we want to be successful in this world, we have to follow our pa passion. And it's very important that we need to continue to keeping the good work. So with a good skill, with excellent knowledge, with tremendous amount of integrity and humility, we will exceed all of our expectations. One of the other rich attributes of the madam was her memory was eternal for all the help that she received. And her memory was very short for all the negative interaction she had. This is another good quality that we take from Vasumati Divekar Madam into our life. I think this is something very important. Abdul Kalam always used to say, be positive and move away from the negative people. And so 
with all this in mind you need to know to communicate and it's a nice another excellent book dean burnett book the happy brain we need to nurture the brain with uh, like how we nurture our nurture our body we nurture, we need to nurture our brain to be happy and uh, this book the crux of this book says that you are a social being you are not an island and to be a social being you need to cultivate that inside your brain and you need to cultivate interpersonal skill with the colleagues and staff with the surgeons with the patient and the attenders with the administration with the industry and this is very important i think india make in india concept is becoming very popular now and as anesthesiologists practice in this country the clinicians to collaborate with the industry and to come out with products which are self sufficient and we need to start exporting i think once we do that everybody will know us so we know our work and we convert that for the globe to look at us in r and this is what is happening with the vaccination i all my friends in the asia pacific region say that you are lucky to be born in india we are looking for vaccines we don't have the ability to produce vaccine but here we see a country which produces the vaccine in large numbers and then also make sure that it's administered to its patients so all its citizens so we are proud to be indians and this has to what has happened in the vaccine production should also happen to the anesthesia products i am also very happy that there are pharma industries in india which take up the hurdle like neon laboratories who manufacture and make sure that essential anesthesia products are supplied throughout the country many more such pharmaceutical companies are coming up and i think we need to collaborate with them and make sure that we manufacture every single drug that we need after doing all this for the world to know as more i think we need to go into social outreach programs and we did this as covid warriors and many of the magazines have reported and shown the great work of anesthesiologist in this pandemic so we pat our back but also we salute to all the martyrs who lost their life our fellow colleagues who lost their life during this covid pandemic and uh, in the path of growth we shouldn't think that we are always right we need to audit ourselves we need to audit our work we need to introspect on a day to day basis and make sure that all the lacunae are plugged and we move far forwards it's important to harness the new technology all of us have a smartphone and we need to convert this into into a tool that will help us to reach across the borders and one of the things that does it you need to have the right apps the apps can have a log book you can audit your work you can update your work you can be a part of a registry and once you have all this you can start publishing your own work and once you start publishing your own work you are known throughout the world this is an excellent book by kevin po who's written imagine that uh, a few years before if we would have ever thought something like this this book is titled establishing managing and protecting your online reputation a social media guide for physician and medical practices what a book and uh, it shows where the world is running towards now what is the change in direction and uh, if you see the top anesthesiologist in the world they are part of linkedin and believe me this is the account of vasumathi divekar madam she is a part of linkedin facebook divekar madam is a part of facebook a standing example of how age will not come on the way between you and the progress in technology twitter this is the twitter account of vasumathi divekar madam can you believe i would want to ask a question how many of us have a twitter a linkedin a facebook account like divekar madam so she is a true example uh, who has led a life of teaching and preaching and adopting quickly to the modern technology twitter is twitter handle is considered to be one of the best handle across the globe to push your thoughts and gain a lot you can uh, watch several of the online conferences through twitter handle you can see several research project through twitter handle you can go for a great social outreach through twitter handle if you see the top 5 anesthesiologist uh, as per the international ranking you ask all the type 5% of the top anesthesiologist in this world and the single point they say is i am what i am today is because of twitter and this is a take home message 
for each one who is being part of this oration to know that if your work has to be known to the world, we need to adopt this new technique and technology. Instagram, this is Madam's Instagram, Vasumati Divekar Madam's Instagram. So she has moved according to the way the world order progressed. Madam, we are extremely delighted to know that you are truly a legend and a doin and a force who have inspired and continue to inspire each anesthesiologist. So the key messages are, we need to measure our work. Anesthesiologists should be engaged in improving good surgical outcomes. Anesthesiologists should take more ownership and responsibility. And we need to change according to the expectations of our patient. So in summary, medicine has moved from metrics of medical outcomes to patient reported outcome measures and assessing patient satisfaction. As anesthesiologists, it is critical for us to continue to provide exemplary and safe care while also listening carefully to what our patients are interested in and they deserve. We will remain relevant only if we ensure that we do this both things together. We need to strive hard to contribute whenever and wherever, and money is just not everything. This is a very important statement I always used to like. We had several discussions and points during the entire course of the oration, but this is a stimulus. This talk produced a stimulus into many of us, including me. When I was preparing for the oration, I learned several new things. I understood the importance of social media, and I understood how important is that for me to activate all this, like what the Baker Madam has done. So there has been a stimulus that has been provided by this talk. And what is our response? What is my response? So between a stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth. This was said by one of the brilliant thinkers of modern age, Stephen Coey. So we need to uh, make sure that we respond appropriately. This is another statement which I like most from Mahatriya Ra. This is again for Vasumati Diveka Madam. For her children, she was the Quran, Bible, and the Veda. She led by example. It's a huge responsibility, but how else she can explain why she came into the earth before each one of them? Madam is a true example of moving from good to great. She was a true leader, a leader who displayed a paradoxical combination of personal humility and professional will, channeling their energy, drive, creativity, and discipline into something larger and more enduring than themselves, said Jim Collins. So we are so privileged to live in the era of Vasumati Divekar Madam and I end up my oration by thanking the entire organizing team of ISA Navi Mumbai, the studio from Coimbatore, excellently managed by Video Line, led by Anand Peter, and the creatives that you saw in the slides, to one of my very good friends and an innovator and creator, Pradeep Yuvaraj of Presantum Creations, to all my department colleagues who gave me time to prepare for this oration and to each one of you who have logged in either through the Zoom or who, didn't, who were not able to join the Zoom, who went into the Facebook Live, I thank all of you. Your presence here is a tribute to the phenomenal work done by Vasumati Divekar Madam. On behalf of each one of you, let me pray to Almighty God to shower on her His grace to make sure that she continues to inspire us and lead a very happy, healthy life and making sure that she will take our country forwards in this field of anesthesia. Truly, I'm delighted and honored to present the first Vasumati Divekar oration. I take this opportunity to immensely thank each one of you for being a part of it. And I also assure you, for those who have not been able to come in the Zoom link, the recorded version of this can be circulated to you and uh, it'll be a pleasure to get your feedback. Sincere thanks for the opportunity. Madam, I bow to you for the phenomenal work. I thank Dr. Anita Rai and uh, uh, Dr. Siddharth for what you have done to Madam and it's my pleasure. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Dr. Bala. What a collection of thoughts and beautifully conveyed to us as well. It was an honor for us as well to have you speak so nicely on all the thinking about how we must know and how we can be known. To be known, we must know. And we are fortunate as anesthesiologists, like Dr. Bala Venkat said, to, be, to know a lot of variety of things. But the onus of to be known also lies on us. We need to get into a whole variety of stuff. And we need to be more uh, you know, careful about how we interact with patients. We need to be there as perioperative physicians. He has covered so many things about humility, integrity, about being passionate about what we know. And if we, if we do all these things, then there is no way in which we will not be known. So thank you, Dr. Bala Venkat. I am very sorry and apologize for all the inconvenience we had from our side with the lights going off and all. But we are so happy that the entire oration has gone off so nicely. You have spoken beautifully on behalf of Dr. Devekar, madam, and on behalf of the entire ISA Navi Mumbai. I'm very thankful to you. Thank you so much. I shall give over to Dr. Siddharth to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you again, everyone. Uh, Dr. Anita Rai, yes, may, may I request uh, Madam Diveker to speak a few minutes now for her students across the globe, because initially oh. it was not very audible. Uh, can we request her to share her thoughts? Sure, sure. Sure, we will give the mic to Dr. Diveker. Camera on Diveker, ma'am, please. Okay, okay. Actually, uh, you have said it all, Dr. Parvankat. <laughs> I didn't need, uh, I needn't uh, add any further. But uh, uh, I think uh, the, the students of today uh, is so lucky to have all this uh, technology at his hand. And uh, uh, just remember the olden days when we had only uh, the pulse and stethoscope for, uh, and uh, for, uh, monitoring and uh, you can imagine what uh, it must have been for us <laughs> to deliver a safe anesthesia and of course uh, uh, in the past uh, you know people came into anesthesia uh, because they had a problem <laughs> of how the residence or money or something but, uh, uh, but uh, so uh, 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 that's why they used to come for anesthesia it was not a uh, first choice subject. And uh, it's so nice and uh, 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 interesting to see that people now uh, come to anesthesia as their first choice also. So I wish you all the best uh, in this. Uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Venker, uh, Dr. Val Venkat has given you all the <laughs> necessary <laughs> inputs from me. Uh, OK, all the best. Thank you so much, madam. It's such a privilege uh, to, to see you and to listen to you and for all your students from across the globe. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, thank you so much, sir. With your permission, now if uh, I may proceed with the vote of thanks. OK, so uh, first of all, uh, special thanks to all of uh, the viewers who in spite of uh, so many glitches uh, stuck have uh, you know still i can't see any drop in numbers and uh, uh, I, I assure you all that uh, we will be providing a recorded version uh, so that uh, all the parts which you have missed uh, can be seen and uh, special thanks to uh, the the uh, dy patel uh, who allowed us to uh, use their auditorium for for the presentation uh, we have with us uh, the, the Dean, uh, Dr. Shashindran, sir. Uh, we have uh, uh, with us uh, the Director, uh, also Dr. Manisha Bobre. Uh, special thanks to, uh, of course, to uh, Dr. Bala Venkat for the personal interest, which you know I never imagined. And it's so, 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 so much for, for us to learn, sir, from you and emulate. And uh, my sincere apologies uh, for the glitches which I've got. I own up the responsibility for the same. Uh, special thanks to uh, to the team members of ISN of Mumbai who uh, helped us with uh, with all the uh, all the support and who uh, 
strived hard to make sure that this uh, vision of uh, uh, having the first oration in ma'am's name uh, you know gets uh, successful we uh, assure you that uh, we will strive hard to keep the tradition alive and uh, will continue to uh, have it uh, you know on a regular basis so thank you so much uh, all of you uh, with these words uh, i will now like to uh, uh, end the session today's session uh, thank you all